The story of modern science begins with enlightenment when Europeans decided to break away from the intellectual hegemony of the church. The worldview of the church was rooted in its faith in the Bible and Jesus, and the church stated that those who believe in the Bible and Jesus would go to eternal heaven after death, while those who don't believe in Bible and Jesus would go to eternal hell. Enlightenment thinking decided to break away from hell and heaven and focus on the earth. Therefore, there are valid reasons to say that science and religion are contradictory. However, the break between enlightenment thinking and the church wasn't so stark as is often made out to be. Enlightenment thinkers carried forward many of the core assumptions of Christianity, such as the depersonalization of nature, the separation of one individual from other individuals, and the concept of law drawn from the idea of Christian covenants. The novelty of enlightenment was the assumption that nature is governed by mathematics. Enlightenment thinkers did not give up the idea that God created the world. They added the idea that God was a mathematical thinker. They claimed that God was a rational thinker, mathematics was the highest kind of rationality, and therefore God must be a mathematical thinker. Therefore, when God created the world, he must have created a mathematical universe. The mathematization of the universe in turn depended on the depersonalization of nature. The separation of individuals and a system of laws based upon the idea of religious covenants, all of which were taken from Christianity. Therefore, the core assumptions of enlightenment were rooted in Christian theology. Prior to European enlightenment, mathematics had been used for city planning and architecture in many parts of the world. In India, mathematics was used to calculate planetary positions, which were then used to calculate time very accurately, which was then used for precisely executing Vedic rituals. However, nowhere in the world did anyone claim that the whole of nature was mathematical, or that mathematics was the highest form of rationality, or that God was a mathematical thinker. All these are creations of enlightenment thinking. How Christian theology led to the Enlightenment ideas, which then led to modern science, is rarely discussed at present. Most students of science think that science broke away from religion rather than being created from it. To better understand the roots of modern science in Christian theology, we have to look at European history. We know today that Greeks and Romans were practicing polytheistic religions before 500 BCE. Historians have studied the similarities between Greek, Roman, Babylonian and Egyptian systems of gods and found significant overlap between them. Not many people have studied the connection between these polytheistic religions and the Vedic system at present, primarily because Europeans want to trace their history back to their lands rather than farther away from it. The crucial departure from this polytheistic religious society began around 500 BCE due to a group of philosophers that are today called pre-Socratic philosophers. Among them are names such as Parmenides, Heraclitus, Zeno and Anaximander. All these philosophers began what we can today called the Greek Enlightenment, namely a break away from polytheistic religions to conceptualize the world based on logic and mathematics. The trend started by pre-Socratic philosophers solidified with Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. A new worldview emerged which is today called Greek philosophy under which the world had to be understood rationally observationally and mathematically. Mind, soul, god, demigod, ritual, temples, etc. were excluded. Around 200 BCE, what we call monotheistic Judaism emerged in Israel. While this is another big topic, to note it briefly, 
Even the inhabitants of Israel and surrounding regions were practicing polytheistic religions before 200 BC. The Middle Eastern religions share a lot of commonalities with Greek, Egyptian, Roman and Babylonian systems of gods. This history is important because Jews originated the concept of covenant law. Social laws had previously been created in Greek times. Geometrical shapes and numbers were supposed to follow the laws of geometry and arithmetic. But covenant law elevated the idea of law to a divine agreement between man and God. Those who followed the covenant law were called the people of God and good people. Those who did not follow the covenant law were not the people of God and were sometimes considered evil. In some cases, they were also called the followers of the enemy of God, namely Satan. Within this atmosphere of laws, Jesus was born and from him Christianity developed. However, Jesus never spoke about laws. He instead spoke about love and brotherhood, duty and sacrifice and leading a simple life with devotion to God. However, when early Christianity spread to Europe, the teachings of Jesus were married to the Greek and Jewish concepts of laws. Christians now started saying that Jews have one divine covenant with God, but God had decided to forego the previous covenant with Jews and establish a new divine covenant with all of humanity through Jesus. Since Jews did not agree with this assertion, Therefore, great enmity between Jews and Christians ensued, which led to the persecution of Jews by Christians for many centuries afterwards. While Jews were extremely wary of Greek and Roman cultural influence on their society, Christians overturned that cultural separation. They wholeheartedly adopted Greek philosophy, accepted the Roman ideas of priests and nobles, embraced Greek and Latin as their language and began transforming European society from within. This is how Christianity works even today. When Christians enter a new society, they accept the local language and customs, marry their ideas with the local ideas and try to transform the new society toward Christianity from within. A lot of tactical maneuvering is required and Christianity accepts it as a necessity for the purposes of spreading Christianity. Christians were successful through this method when Roman rulers accepted Christianity as their official religion. Thereafter, Christianity spread throughout Europe by the power of the sword rather than the power of love and brotherhood which Jesus had taught previously. But after the collapse of the Roman Empire in the 5th century, a power vacuum was created in all the places that Romans had ruled over previously. In Europe, the vacuum was so complete that the people completely forgot about Greeks and Romans and broke up into warring clans and tribes and went back to their polytheistic religions. The same happened in the Arab world. Without a centralized powerful ruler, they went back to polytheistic religions and broke up into hundreds of tribes. In this power vacuum, Islam was born as yet another monotheistic religion to displace polytheistic religions and unify people under a single monotheistic god. Islam quickly conquered the Middle East region and then it started spreading to Northern Africa and Southern Europe. Just like Christianity had established a church after the Romans accepted Christianity, similarly Islam created institutions for teaching and expanding its ideology. These institutions studied the works of Greek philosophers and translated them into Arabic. They learned about mathematics from India and accepted a numeral system presently called the Arabic numerals. Then they tried to synthesize Islam with Greek philosophy and Indian mathematics and came up with a comprehensive system that is today known as Islamic philosophy. Due to the development of a comprehensive system, Islam portrayed itself as an intellectual and scientific society 
in contrast to Europeans who had forgotten Greek philosophy and mathematics. Very soon, a clash of civilizations followed, and Arabs and Europeans started fighting religious wars called Crusades. They liberated the parts of Europe under Islamic rule and then proceeded to create a Christian philosophy just like Islamic philosophy. They revived the forgotten Greek and Roman cultures and all this intellectual, cultural and religious revival came to be known as Renaissance, which means revival. Since Renaissance advocated the revival of pre-Christian Greek and Roman cultures, therefore it weakened the power of the church over European society. Church wasn't the sole means of truth anymore. There were other sources such as philosophy and mathematics. With the weakening of the church came the Protestant Reformation under which many Christians broke away from the Roman Catholic Church and established a new Christian denomination presently called Protestantism. Protestants encouraged secular subjects like mathematics, philosophy, and medicine. The tipping point in this development came when Copernicus was sentenced to death by the Catholic Church for saying that the earth revolved around the sun. Galileo, who supported Copernicus, also underwent persecution, although he wasn't sentenced to death because he rationalized his inquiry into the working of nature as an inquiry into the working of God's mind. It is then that Protestants began serious attempts to lay a solid foundation for rational and empirical inquiry about the working of nature within the theological framework of Christianity. These new attempts are today known as Enlightenment. They are portrayed as a breakaway from religion, when it was a continuation of the breakaway from the Catholic Church. They are portrayed as the resurgence of reason over faith when that had already begun during the Renaissance. They are portrayed as the dawn of mathematics when mathematics was received from Greeks and Indians. The main contribution of enlightenment was to lay a philosophical foundation for rational and empirical inquiry into nature that was not opposed to Christianity even if it was opposed to the Catholic Church. It involved the separation of mind and body, the claim that body was governed by mathematical laws while the mind was governed by moral laws, that science pertained to the body while religion pertained to the mind, that God was a mathematical thinker to have created a mathematically governed body, that the concept of covenant law could be extended to the natural world to create input-output covenants between bodies, just like the give-and-take covenants between man and God, that the exploitation of nature was already ordained by God when he had allowed Adam dominion over the world, that the body could be created as independent objects, like the mind was created as independent persons, and so on. If science was the new child being born, Christianity was the mother of the child. The birth of the child is sometimes painful to the mother. So it was for Christianity. Today people talk about the pain endured during the birth of science and assume that because science was born with great difficulty to religion, therefore science must be independent of religion. The fact is that Religion gave birth to science painfully. 